hope you'll join. Um, thanks everyone for jumping into the uh, 37th Agora community call. Um, I think I think we'll start this call off maybe uh, on some roadmap items. I know Roland, uh, you had some points on that. It would be, you know, maybe we dive right into it. Sure, uh, and I appreciate getting bumped up the agenda. That's <laughs> awesome. Um, all right, so hey everybody, happy to happy to talk through uh, stuff from the product and engineering side here at Agor Copco. Um, I, I figured I would structure the update around the the roadmap post that I had I had made in the forum and then also as a as a Twitter thread um, talking about our goals for Q4. So. Um, we have upgrade 13, which is uh, sort of named from the engineering side, as you might expect, um, it, coming coming into testnet. I think today, actually. So over the next several days, we'll be we'll be driving that towards testnet, um, and it includes a few things that are relevant to that Q4 roadmap. So uh, just to kind of walk through things in in order here, based on my previous post. Um, one of the goals for this quarter was to launch one additional contract to mainnet. That won't be part of upgrade 13, but we are still on target to do that this month. Um, so the the Crabble team that has been working on lending of NFTs, uh, they were at our booth in at Cosmoverse and did a demo. So some of you may have talked to them. Um, they are going through the Agoric Opco review of their contracts right now. Uh, and as of yet, we're, we're still on target for, for December there. Um, that will be an alpha launch. So uh, likely they'll, they'll go out um, on the contract side first, mostly to ensure things are running and stable, and then we'll 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 um, bring in inventory and marketing beyond that in a future upgrade. Uh, but on the engineering side, all things are looking good there. Um, we are preparing for the cross-chain capability launch. So um, another group that's building on Agoric, Calypso, who also were in our booth at Cosmoverse, and uh, it's the Mystic Labs team that has that did the MetaMask Snap for Cosmos, um, and they've been working on interchain accounts capability on the Agoric side for, for a while now, actually. Um, had an excellent session with them over the, the past week or two, getting to a clear pathway to deliver upgrades to the Agoric stack that let uh, Agoric smart contracts interface with the IBC module and, and deal with interchain accounts, which is core capability that they need, but will also be used for, useful for any other builder that wants to do uh, cross-chain uh, composability from Agoric contracts. And uh, uh, this is an area that we really are excited about because we, we have true differentiation there and, and think that we can easily make the case that this uh, that Agoric will be the best place to build those sorts of contracts. And we expect that to be a, a growing theme um, as multi-chain sort of gets more and more ingrained and as IBC goes to more and more chains. Um, so super excited there. I've made a lot of progress uh, this quarter, so feeling good about that one. Um, tooling for performance and observability. Uh, a, a bunch of a lot of the work that we're doing as on, on our side, as you might expect, is sort of deep in the bowels of the engineering. Um, and I'm probably not best uh, poised to speak to some of the details there, but uh, we have sort of a set of upgrades that are coming in that will allow the platform to sort of be more performant in the future, allow us to observe it more uh, effectively in the future, and then allow uh, future upgrades to, to just work more smoothly. Um, not a lot of end user stuff included in, in that, those kinds of upgrades, but a lot of, lot of progress happening in the, in the kernel side. Um, on the end user side, we do have in upgrade 13, uh, which is, should be coming out shortly again. Um, we are finally, uh, at least on the, on the platform side, getting rid of a separate step that end users have to take to, uh, to provision a smart wallet. So those of you that have interacted with applications on the Agoric chain, you may know that uh, when you first enter, you're, you're um, asked to provision an account on the Agoric side with a 10 build cost. That is going to get wrapped into the first transaction a user makes on uh, on any Agoric application. So if you're creating a vault for the first time, or you know, for example, for Creat, if you're buying an NFT for the first time, there will be a one IST fee added to your transaction cost um, on the Agoric side that will just provision the smart wallet for you. Um, and so that that addresses a, a major uh, point of friction that we've you know heard from users, and we're we're excited to to get that upgraded. Um, there will be additional UX uh, upgrades coming that we hope will come in December. Um, they'll likely client side, uh, but I'll have more to say on that as we get a, a better schedule. Um, I realize 
taking up a lot of time here, so I'll try to go a little bit more quickly. Uh, the final thing that we're really working hard on right now is developer experience upgrade. So uh, another friction point for developers coming into the system uh, was the getting started docs. Some of them take you down a pathway that you actually have to change when you're uh, developing to deploy to testnet or mainnet. And so we're getting all that aligned. We're getting the, the getting started applications to more effectively sort of gradually teach Agoric concepts as you go. We're making sure that you don't have to clone Agoric SDK. Uh, so a few things that you know we, we've known were low-hanging fruit to help the developer experience all of those are are coming together um, and have been over the last week so feeling really good about our, our q4 goals um, the one thing that we had previously talked about that will slip is a zoe upgrade um, that's not end user facing so it's largely sort of in the uh, tech tech improvement side of things that will likely slip to January, uh, but shouldn't have any impact on on users of the chain or, or things like that. It's mostly uh, on our pathway to getting the platform to be reliable and upgradable and sustainable. Um, all right, uh, so that was a lot. Uh, I'll turn it back to you, Santi, but happy to answer questions if anyone has any. No, that's great. It's great to hear about all that, all the, <clears throat> all the development updates. Uh, so let's... Um... Thank you, Roland. Let's let's uh, why don't we transition to some community stuff? Um, I think JD will have you touch on that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, thanks, Santi. Uh, to uh, to start off, uh, just as Roland mentioned, we have the upcoming software upgrade, and so there will be an initial proposal will be on EmoryNet, which is our long-standing testnet for software upgrades. And after a successful period there, it'll be moving to mainnet, and that'll be a software upgrade proposal. So just keep an eye out on that. The, there will be a, the usual upgrade forum posts coming around it. And then uh, uh, moving on from that, uh, some exciting news, especially if you're a validator tuning in today. The delegation program has moved forward, and the delegations have been sent out. So new delegation uh, validators who are new to the delegation program have received their delegations and validators who were previously participating in the program will see an addition into their uh, an addition on top of their previous delegations. And so uh, I want to start by just saying thank you for your patience through this process. And also I want to thank you all for your contributions to the network. And uh, stay tuned, there will be a forum post with, uh, with full details uh, uh, about the program moving forward from here. And, uh, and that'll be going to the forum. And then on the note of the forum, there are a few posts that may be of interest to people, uh, notably, uh, um, uh, oh, sorry, before I forget. Uh, I just remembered there will be a, some additional small delegations going out uh, in the next few weeks as the un current undelegations, the tokens we have unbonding uh, go out, uh, will be become available to be delegated. And then moving on to the forum updates, uh, Gauntlet shared some analysis on a few assets. So starting off, they shared uh, an analysis for ST Atom new mint limits suggestions. And then they've also s shared their suggested parameters for STK Atom. And for those that may not be familiar, ST Atom is the liquid staked Atom issued on the Stride blockchain. And STK Atom is the liquid staked Atom issued on the persistence blockchain via P stake. And so be sure to go check those out. Uh, the SDK Adam also has a discussion thread going to propose it as collateral for vaults, which is why there's the analysis for it. And then Gauntlet also shared a retro on the IST non-parity event from early November, uh, which some people may recall. Uh, uh, and I, it, it's a it's a good read, uh, informative. And then lastly, there is another a new asset proposal from also from the Stride team, and it's proposing the STINJ, the liquid staked uh, INJ, which is the staking token for the injective blockchain. And uh, build stakers are encouraged to join the discussion there. Uh, go add your add your thoughts, add your opinions, and uh, and yeah, that's it for that's it for me. So Santi, I'll just uh, pass back to you. Wonderful. 
Cool. Thank you, JD. Yeah, this, um, you know, I, I, I think I want to talk about some of the recent integrations we've had at a really high level. Um, and I don't know if, if Vanessa, do we have you here as a speaker? They can pull you. There you go. I see you now. Yeah, I'm here. All right. Hello, cool. everyone. Yeah, cool, cool. So, you know, I, folks might have seen that, you know, we have a few integrations that happened this past month. Um, and we've actually done what we've we've called inside the build, which are uh, workshops with these teams to actually walk through those integrations and show us how to literally use their product. Um, and those have been really, really cool. We've had the product team join those, um, Chris, our DevRel. Uh, they're just a great opportunity. So if you see those come out, I highly recommend joining if, if you like to get a little more technical on things. Um, so we, we actually um, uh, had one for Pine Street Labs, which uh, their product wallet OS um, actually uh, open support for build. That was really, really cool. Um, Subquery, which is indexing for Agoric on-chain data, also did inside the build this past month. Um, they walked through that process and how developers can take take advantage of the Subquery uh, platform. Uh, and we also more recently did one with Cread, the dynamic NFT app that that is live on Agoric right now. Um, thanks, Chris, for, for uh, actually giving that one and walking through some of the technical details. Um, We've also recently announced uh, uh, Babylon, which integrated Goric, um, which at the core, it's a user-friendly platform uh, for Bitcoin timestamping. Um, and so we're actually looking to schedule a uh, inside the build with them as well, um, a really novel kind of thing there. And I don't know if anyone here on this call wants to touch on it at all, but it is, uh, we're, we're excited to see what that looks like. Um, and one thing I should note is that we've, we've recently kind of overhauled our ecosystem page. So if you go to agoric.com slash ecosystem, you'll see a lot of these uh, new integrations pop up in the rightful categories. Um, we've also just included a lot of other projects that, um, you know, uh, uh, we want to share and show, you know, that they're actually contributing to this ecosystem. Um, so take a look at that if you haven't. Um, I don't know if Vanessa, I missed anything important here on <laughs> some of the partnerships or integration work. Um, but if, uh, yeah, just jump in if I, if I miss anything. Um, it sounds like that a lot of them, uh, I know that there was a question about BitGo earlier that we discussed it in the mm -hmm. last community call. Since then, there was a public announcement made, which people can find um, either in uh, the Agoric Twitter stream or with BitGo with announcements as well. Perfect. Yep. Yep. If you go to our, uh, if you go to agoric.com slash blog, you'll find the, uh, the big BitGo, <laughs> BitGo cover image there. It'll, it'll dive into those details. Um, so yeah, great. Uh, you know, some other things on on kind of content marketing. So we're we're releasing a a uh, we started a series called um, you know uh, very simple getting started. <laughs> um, you know, we realize folks who are new to the Agoric ecosystem are going to have a lot of questions, right? They're going to have a lot of questions around what is build, what is Agoric, right? What's Agoric's history? How's its team composed? What what's the tech? What's the value, right? Um, you know, what is IST? What's this thing called Inner Protocol? Um, we know a lot of folks coming to the ecosystem might not know those answers. And so these are really, really high level articles that we're going to um, start to stream out. And we've got uh, currently two, maybe three on, on the blog um, with a lot more coming down the pipeline. Um, and so Ant-Man shout out here for, for writing those. <laughs> I don't know if you want to add anything to that, but um, they are, they are really, really cool resources for getting started with, with the Gork. Um, the other two things I want to know, and I, I think Dean, I see on this call, I don't, th I don't see as a speaker right now, but um, Dean was actually on FinTech Blueprint uh, with Lex Orland, Dean uh, and Dan Finlay of MetaMask. I know you folks talked about uh, a lot about snaps, a lot about power and JavaScript, extensibility, you know, uh, safety in a very wild uh, <laughs> crypto environment. Um, it's been, it's a great, great talk. We'll link it here. Um, and I know Roland, you also shared some insights on Blockster. That was really cool to see. Um, and we'll we'll make sure to share links on that. I think actually on our Twitter, we we've we posted all of all of that, if I'm not mistaken, right, Ant Man? I think that's all there. Yeah, you can. Yep, you can see those on our Twitter, um, the Roland article, and as well as the podcast. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's right there in the stream. Um, yeah, I mean, some other stuff that's less media focused, but, you know, events, events are a big thing. Um, we, uh, you know, I just want to do a shout out to, uh, the Cosmos NYC meetup that Jeet runs. That's, um, uh, been going on for like every month over the past year. It's had great traction. I, I don't know if there's one that's coming up this month, but, um, there was one last month, uh, that, that was fantastic. Um, our, uh, Turkish advocates, Onar and Bogodar were, were, uh, stopped by IBC summit in Istanbul. Um, they, 
uh, yeah, they met with folks, um, shared a lot of information about Agoric, <clears throat> especially the new, you know, people who are new to Cosmos, IBC. Um, it's a, it's a, uh, you know, it's great to have both Honar and Bugra in a place that, you know, we can't physically be. Um, and, you know, similarly, we, we co-sponsored CosmoCon. I don't know if uh, any folks on this call were there, but that, that just happened uh, on December 6th during India Blockchain Week. Um, and that was, you know, similarly, it was a, it was a Cosmos event, right, to get um, awareness around what Cosmos is doing. Um, and so we, we co-sponsored that with Omniflix. Um, I know Fetch AI was there, uh, Comdex, Leap, HyperSign, and I think a few other projects were all part of that event. Um, I heard it went well. There were talks. There were a lot of uh, informational sessions, educational. Uh, so overall, really, really cool. And we're excited to kind of keep expanding Agoric's footprint globally with more events, um, meetups. So, you know, stay on the lookout for that as, as that comes. And, you know, while we're on events, Vanessa, be, we should definitely talk maybe Web Summit. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the partner programs team here at Agoric Opco had the opportunity to go to the Web Summit in Lisbon last month. Uh, for those who aren't familiar, uh, Web Summit is a major tech conference for traditional web companies and also some Web3. About 70,000 attendees uh, go into Lisbon, which has a population of 500,000. So it's really interesting how Web Summit really took over the city. And there were over 2,000 companies. And so um, the partner programs team, including myself, uh, Hannah, Jeet, and Anjan, all went and spoke and met with several builders uh, interested in expanding to Web3. And we had a lot of engaging discussions. So we're thrilled with the outcome of meeting people building in, just to name a few sectors of real world assets, uh, carbon markets, entertainment, gaming, loyalty programs, uh, different forms of fan engagement, um, different layers of entertainment and music included. I mean, large group set. Um, all very interested in different aspects of the JavaScript smart contract platform Zoe and how it could bring benefit to their Web2 experience, either uh, expanding or extending uh, capabilities to Web3 or something as a new market grab. So fantastic experience, and we hope to have uh, some more updates coming from that event in the coming months. I don't know if you mentioned this. There were like 70,000 people there, right? Did you mention that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, like a ton of startup teams. Yeah, I, I, I'm really jealous. I didn't, I didn't go to that. That looked like an incredible event. Um, well, great, great. Um, well, we'll, we'll bring you next time. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. Um, cool. I mean, I think that covers a lot of the, a lot of the topics. We, we blew by a lot in 20 minutes. I'm impressed. I'm very impressed. Um, so. I'll make a quick note that the next community call uh, will not be, uh, so it will be on January 4th, 2024. Um, and there's no community office hours this month. We'll probably do it uh, uh, in January as well. So uh, we'll make sure to reach out to everybody and uh, make sure we, uh, we get you, we get you uh, on those calls. Um, is there anything else from, from the Agoric folks or I don't know if there are any kind of community questions that have come in um, that we want to talk about. I know we have, we have a few minutes here. Uh, maybe I've completely missed the topic we want to discuss. Good from my side. All right, cool. Well, thanks everybody. JD, yeah, thank, thank you, Santi. All the speakers. Thank you so much for the MC work. <laughs> Always, we try. We're trying. Oh. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Patty. Thank you. Bye-bye.